Hello, everyone, and welcome back to week three of the FPE. I'm your coach, Radioactive Mayo of the Connecticut Corbinites, and we are up against the Quebec Quagsires this week. It is week three. Of course, if you haven't already checked out week one or week two, go back and watch week one and week two. We had two excellent battles in week one and week two. They both came down to the wire. Honestly, let me be honest with you guys. I'm really upset that we didn't win either of those battles. Those were two really good battles, and I really think that I should have won those battles. Um, but I do take full responsibility for losing because I just played poorly in both of them. I think both battles I made um, a couple of misplays that, you know, if I didn't make, we would have definitely came home with the W. But that's all right because it's a long season. Um, we are in this for 12 weeks. After all, it is only week three, and to all my many dedicated Connecticut Corviknight fans out there, do not be discouraged that we're starting off 0-2 because we've got a long season ahead of us. Um, going forward, uh, I'm going to try my best to play better. I think this doing this whole um, live commentary thing during battles is new to me. I've never done this before, and honestly, I think like I just need to work on slowing down uh, focusing less on my commentary and just like paying attention to the battle. Um, so yeah, that's just like for me, I'm going to try to do better and, and make better plays going forward and not focus so much on talking. Cause you know, I, I want to do my best to like explain everything that's happening in the games and like be informative and kind of like teach you what's going on. But like, I also need to like slow down for myself and think through my plays, make sure I'm making the right play. So I actually need to work on balancing that um, and doing that, and we will. It's only week three, so going forward, um, we're going to be focused on getting dubs, getting wins. So let's talk about week three. Week three, we are up against the Quebec Quagsires, up above my head. Uh, you can see they actually um, changed the layout around a little bit. Um, I have the team records now. I put the Connecticut Corbinites up there because we got a sick logo and I gotta, I gotta represent that. So, um, both the teams this week were both 0 and 2. Connecticut Corbinites 0 and 2. Quebec Quagsires also 0 and 2. So someone's getting their first win this week. Um, so let's let's look at this team. We've got Charizard X, Zeraora, Duraludon, Drapion, Delmize, Excelgore. Gurger, Keldeo, Porygon Z, Sandaconda, and Galarian Rapidash. All right. Now, um, my initial thoughts looking at this team are, okay, it's got some some threats. I really don't like Zeraora. Zeraora is, like, super annoying. Um, and Mega Charizard X is really scary. Especially if it gets up a Dragon Dance, because if it gets up a Dragon Dance, we can't really outspeed it with anything. Um, they also have big threats in, like, Keldeo and Porygon Z, which can do huge damage. Um, but yeah, Charizard X, like, we should be able to deal with it just as long as it doesn't get up a Dragon Dance. Um, if it gets up a Dragon Dance, basically I'm just going to try to Destiny Bond it. Um, but other than that, I think we can handle it. Zero Aura is, like, one of the fastest Pokemon in the game, so it outspeeds my entire team. Um, but we've got some things that can switch into it and deal with it. Duraludon is actually really scary. I think Duraludon is coming 100%. It has a pretty good matchup versus my team. Um, Steel and Dragon type. It's a pretty big offensive threat. It can hit things around. It's got the same speed tier as Como O, so it can speed tie with Como O. Hit it with a dragon move, knock it out. It can knock out Weezing. It also gets Thunderbolt for Gyarados. So, um, Duraludon is a huge problem. We gotta work with that. Um, we see Drapion. I think Drapion is definitely coming also, um, just because it's, it's a great answer to Bayonet being a dark type. Also, Jirachi being a dark type. Um, I think Drapion is highly likely to come. Delmize, I'm not like super concerned about. It is their only Rapid Spinner, um, their only form of hazard control, aside from Defog Girder, I guess. But I'm not too concerned about Delmize. Um, I think we can handle it if it comes. Uh, Excelgore. Excelgore could actually be annoying 
um, if it does come and like sets up hazards in the beginning of the game. Uh, my team does have a lot of defog options, but we're not actually running any defog this week, so that's just something to keep in mind. Hopefully I don't see Excel Gore, but it's definitely something that could come. Um, Gerger. Gerger is actually really bulky with the Evil Light because it's not fully evolved, and it could be annoying if it starts setting up bulk ups. Um, but we can handle it. We've got things that can deal with it. Keldeo is a huge problem. Keldeo does a lot of damage, really strong water type. Um, we should be able to switch into it fine, and it's hard to outspeed because it's actually really fast. Um, but mainly, I just don't want it to be Calm Mind. That's my main concern with Keldeo. Uh, other than that, I think we can handle it. Porygon Z is uh, also pretty scary. Uh, we've got the Porygon 2 which is the pre-evolution of the Porygon Z, so I'm like, all right, they're probably going to bring Porygon Z just to flex. Um, and if it's choice specs, it just, like, kills everything uh, with Tri-Attack, and it can run Dark Pulse for Bayonet, so Porygon Z is kind of scary, not going to lie. Uh, Sandaconda, I'm really not that concerned about Sandaconda. I don't think it's going to come, but I guess it could. Um, it's just, like, big sand ground thing. And then Galarian Rapidash. Uh, I actually think there's a good chance that we'll see Galarian Rapidash this week. Um, just because it has a good matchup versus my team in particular. It outspeeds Coma O and can knock it out with Fairy type move. It can also hit Weezing with Psychic type moves. Um, and it has the Wild Charge to hit Gyarados. So I think there's a good chance we might see Galarian Rapidash this week, but we'll find out. Alright. Now let's talk about what your Connecticut coordinates are bringing this week. You see it right here. It's the Coma O. We're bringing the Clangorous Soul, Throat Spray. We ain't messing around anymore. After losing the first two games of the season, I'm like, all right, I'm done playing games. We're just bringing straight threats now. Um, basically, our game plan this week is to get ourselves an opportunity to click Clangorous Soul safely, and as long as we can click Clangorous Soul safely, I think we pretty much just win, because they don't really have much to deal with the Clangorous Soul. Um, Clangorous Soul is going to sap 33% of my max HP, but then it's going to boost all of my stats by 1.5 times, so... It, it, Everything's just going to die, basically. We've got Aura Sphere, Clang Scales, Boom Burst. Nothing lives after I, cl I click Clang or Soul. Nothing lives. The only thing that they have is um, if they bring Choice Scarf to Raladon, it could speed tie me and kill me with Draco Meteor. Um, because Duraladon has the same base speed as me, um, if they bring Choice Scarf to Raladon, um, we would have the same exact speed, and then it's just like a coin flip 50-50 on who goes first. So that's like the only thing they really have um, that can take out Coma O after I click Clang or Soul. Like other than that, they don't really have anything that can handle it. Oh, and also Throat Spray is gonna boost my special attack by another stage because it's a Clang or Soul is a sound based move. So I'm gonna have plus one to all my stats and plus two special attack. Um, so yeah, everything just dies. So. The goal this week is to click Clang and win. Moving on, we got Jirachi here. Um, Jirachi, this is kind of a weird set. Pretty unconventional Jirachi set you're looking at here. Uh, we got the Stealth Rock. Really want to get up Stealth Rock this week because after um, taking Stealth Rock damage, it's just going to make winning with Clang or Soul that much easier because um, everything will confirm die. And their only form of hazard control is uh, the Delmise, or potentially the Defog Girder, which I don't think is super likely, but... Yeah, so I, I don't think um, we'll see much hazard control this week. Just getting up Stealth Rock is nice to just chip away at everything, especially uh, the Mega Charizard X. If we can get Stealth Rock up before it Mega Evolves, it's just going to take half HP upon switching, so that's huge. Um, we've just got Psychic and Aura Sphere. For attacking moves, um, Psychic um, is for Keldeo. Um, we've got some special defense investment. This thing can deal with Keldeo decently well. Um, and Aura Sphere is for Duraludon. We can 2-8 KO Duraludon. 
and with the special defense, we can live some hits from Duraldon. Um, and yeah, we can do some decent damage with these two moves. And then we've got the Healing Wish. The Healing Wish is what's potentially going to give me my opportunity to click Clangor Soul with Koma O, because basically, I want to click Healing Wish on probably either Drapion, uh, most likely, or maybe Delmize if it comes. Um, and because those are also two likely switches to Jorachi. And if we can Healing Wish on either of those and then bring in Koma O at full HP, it's just like a, fle a, f a free Clangor Soul. So that's the plan. Um, with Jirachi. It's basically just like, you know, take hits from like Keldeo or whatever, get up Stealth Rock, and then use the Healing Wish to get the Clang. That's the plan. Citrus Berry just to get a little bit of health. We've got enough speed investment to outspeed Duraludon. That's what the speed investment is for. Um, max HP, because I want to be able to take hits, and then just do the rest of the EVs and special defense so we can take hits from Keldeo and Duraludon. And so that's basically Jirachi. Moving on to Bayonet, we'll bring in the Bayonet this week. Um, Destiny Bond, we're always going to bring Destiny Bond, like let's be real here. I'm never going to bring Bayonet that doesn't have Destiny Bond. Um, Destiny Bond is like my failsafe in case Mega Charizard X gets off a Dragon Dance and then I can't deal with it. Um, because honestly, if Mega Charizard X gets off a Dragon Dance, it's going to be really hard to deal with. So that's why we have the Destiny Bond, just in case that gets out of hand, um, we can take it out. Uh, knockoff is just nice, we can knock off stuff like Drapion. Basically my plan is, also with Bayonet, if they bring in Drapion on Bayonet, I'm not gonna Destiny Bond it, I'm actually just gonna like sack Bayonet to Drapion, I'll just knock off it and let Drapion take me out, because that'll also give me a free switch into Coma O on Drapion. I'm trying to get a free switch uh, with Coma O on Drapion to click clang, that's the plan. Uh, we've got the knockoff though, we can knock off any items, even Porygon Z, if they try to switch into Porygon Z on this thing, uh, getting a knockoff will be huge. Um, Shadow Sneak is just priority to pick off like some weakened Pokemon, could be really nice. Um, also, Shadow Sneak has a chance to one-hit KO Galarian Rapidash, so that's cool. And then Taunt is just there um, for something, I don't know, just in case we see like hazards on like Excel Gore lead maybe. We're immune to Final Gambit, so yeah, we don't want to deal with Excel Core, it's annoying. And uh, yeah, Max Attack, Adamant, doing big damage. Uh, this speed is for... what is this speed investment for? I don't even know. Something. Oh, Charizard, I think, maybe? I don't know, whatever. Bayonet, is gonna do its job this week, that's all you need to know. Alright, moving on, Gyarados. We're bringing big Gyarados this week. Dragon Dance, you know what it is. Waterfall, Earthquake, and Bounce. We're bouncing it up once again. Um, this thing's pretty good. This is actually uh, a really reliable switch into Keldeo because it resists both of Keldeo's um, same type moves, and Keldeo can't really do anything to Gyarados. That's why we've got this HP investment here. Um, so basically, we can comfortably switch into Keldeo anytime we want with Gyarados, and might just be able to get a free Dragon Dance off in Keldeo's face, and that would be fantastic, because they actually don't have much um, that can deal with Gyarados. And we've also got the Wakanberry. Uh, what Wakanberry is going to do is it's going to half the damage taken from a super effective electric attack. So normally Dar Gyarados is super weak to electric attacks, like four times a week to electric attacks. Um, but with the Wakanberry, it's going to weaken that. And this is actually going to allow us to live a Thunderbolt from Duraludon. So if they bring the Choice Scarf Duraludon, which I think is pretty likely um, after a Dragon Dance, we'll still live it, and then we can just take it out, the Duraludon. So that's huge. Um, this thing, the only problem is uh, this thing might not outspeed Zero Aura even after a Dragon Dance because Zero Aura is so fast. And even through the Wakan Berry, I think Zero Aura can still take us out with Plasma Fists. So that's just something we have to keep in mind. Zero Aura is like a huge problem. Um, but Intimidate is also really nice um, just to be able to uh, deal with physical attackers like Charizard and Zero Aura and such. Um, so yeah, basically the goal with Gyarados is try to get up a Dragon Dance and do big damage. 
That's that's always the plan. All right, moving on. One more time. This time we're busting out the Rotom Mo. We got physically defensive here, and basically the plan this week is get this thing out into the yard. And what you want to do is you want to mow so that you get like those lines in the ground. You know what I mean? So it makes your lawn look really nice. You get those lines going back and forth, and then like once it's all flat, you want you want those lines um, in your lawn to make your lawn look really good. That's basically the plan here. Um, and we just got max physical defense to be able to deal with the Zero Aura comfortably and any other physical attackers that might come. And yeah, pretty standard. We've got Thunder Wave, which can be really good for catching stuff like um, potentially Duraludon or Charizard on the Switch. Um, thunder Waving either of them would be fantastic. So that's, yeah, that's basically it for Rotom Mo. And last but certainly not least, we got the Crocodile once again. And once again, just like week one, we're bringing the Choice Scarf Crocodile with Moxie. I take a good look at this team, and I'm like, wow, there's no good Earthquake resists. Like, we've got Delmize, but, like, I also have Knock Off. So, like, Delmize isn't even a great switch in. And there's, there's really no good Earthquake resists other than that. So, but we're just going to click Earthquake and pray and do big damage, rack up some moxie boosts, hopefully. Once again, enough speed down here. This is enough speed to outspeed Duraludon. That's that's the speed tier we're hitting. Um, and we've got the Choice Scarf, so we can outspeed the Choice Scarf to Duraludon. So, yeah, just click Earthquake, get moxie boosts, late game, take it home. We've got plenty of potential win conditions on this team. Like I said, the goal going into this game is to get the opportunity to click Clang with Coma O. Um, if we can't do that, though, like we've got stuff like Dragon Dance Gyarados, Moxie Crocodile. So we've got other win conditions, just in case. Um, that's basically the plan this week. We'll see what happens. Hope we win. Um, I'm not too concerned. Um, I'm interested to see what they bring, though. There's a lot of different things that they could bring with this team, so... I guess we'll see. I'll see y'all in the battle. Okay, and we are here in the battle. And we see Keldeo, Mega Charizard, Zero Aura, Rapidash, Porygon Z, and Drapion. Um, I knew there was a good chance we would see Rapidash. We do see the Rapidash, so that's cool. Um, we do see the Drapion. So that's good. Uh, Porygon Z is a little scary. Um, no Duraludon. That's kind of surprising. Okay. Um, in terms of leads, I think Zero Aura is like the most likely lead, but it could be anything really. Um, I like. Mm, I kind of want, want to lead Rotom, but I also kind of just want to lead Bayonet. Um, I think Bayonet is fine. I want to see what item they have. I'm going to close the battle. Just to see what they have. I kind of want to see what item something has. Look at this. Switch it to Rotom. Zero Aura. I don't know what that was. But yeah. The plan is to set up on Drapion. I'm glad that we see Drapion. 
Um, my biggest concerns are the Charizard and the Porygon Z, for sure. Gyarados is looking good here. Also, Crocodile is looking really good because they didn't bring Delmize. Because they have no ground resists. So, Crocodile is actually looking really good. They might have scarfed Keldeo. They didn't bring Duraludon at all. So, something. I'm thinking like something has to be Choice Scarfed. So, it's probably Keldeo. Um, that'd be my guess. Charizard's a problem, though. Alright, here we go. What do we see? We see Drapion. Turn 1. Black Sludge. Not surprising. Um, I don't want to stay in here. <clears throat> but I don't want to kill this thing, either. Because I want to set up on it. But, who do I switch into here? Oh, if I clang right away... Can I pull it off? I don't know if I can. I kind of want to wait. I kind of want to wait at this point. Um, it can't go for Pursuit. There's no Pursuit, so I could switch. But I'm trying to decide if I just want to sacrifice Bayonet right off the bat and try to click Clang or Soul immediately. Because um, I wanted to get Stealth Rock up first before I tried to do that. But honestly, like, it's looking pretty good. It's looking like I can just go for it. Like, I can just Mega Evolve and click Taunt in case this thing tries to, like, do something weird, like set up Toxic Spike or something. But I'm pretty sure they're just going to click Knock Off. Let's just do that. Let's just go for Taunt. I can Clang. Oh, it's a dark type. Okay. Well, dark types are immune to prankster, which I forgot about, so that actually didn't work. It's kind of annoying, but they just click knock off, like I knew they would. Um, I'm gonna click knock off here. They'll probably outspeed me. They might predict a destiny bond and switch, which is fine. But I'm gonna click knock off. Cool. Beautiful. You know what time it is now. This is exactly what I wanted. Now, this thing can't do anything to me. The one thing that it could do is it could potentially click Whirlwind. And if they go for Whirlwind here, that'd be amazing. But we're clicking Clang. Let's see what happens. We see the Rapid Dash. Is this thing scarfed? I mean, I suppose it could be. I suppose this could be a Choice Scarf Rapid Dash. I think it's pretty unlikely, though. So, we just click Boom Burst. I think it dies. Oh my god, it's Choice Scarf Rapid Dash. Oh, man. Wow. Okay. So that did not go as planned. Let me just say, that did not go as planned. But it's not over yet. Um, so because Rapidash outsped there, we know that Rapidash is Choice Scarfed. Hmm, that's a little tricky. That's a little bit tricky. Let me think about this, because, like I said, it's not over. We have Crocodile in the back. Um... So like, I I could I could actually 
just go into Gyarados and Dragon Dance. The problem is Zero Aura might outspeed me. Or I could just use this as an opportunity to get up Stealth Rock, which, like, isn't bad either. I think that's my best play. Um, they'll probably just switch into Charizard here, maybe? I don't know. Either way, we're getting up Stealth Rock. No hazard removal, so this will be good. But yeah, the Scarf Rapidash is actually really annoying, because it's going to outspeed um, Crocodile and hit it with Play Rough. I want to say we live that, but it's it, it's going to do a lot. I don't think we can take any um, prior damage with Crocodile. Also, even after a Dragon Dance, it'll outspeed Gyarados and hit it with Wild Charge. So that was, that was well, well done. And we do see the Drapion here. Normally I would click Healing Wish, but Como already died. Um, oof, this is, no, this is tricky. The Wakan Baragon Gyarados is kind of useless, um, because they didn't bring Duraludon. I guess they could have Thunderbolt and Porygon Z. This is tricky. I think going Gyarados is fine here, though. And we can always Healing Wish back up is the great thing. That's fine. Honestly, losing my Wakan Berry is not a big deal, like I said. Um, and I think going for Dragon Dance here is good. Well, uh, what, did, what are they going to switch into? I don't think they go hard Rapidash. I might just click the bounce. Nah, that's not a good play because they could go zero aura. Damn. Um, let's just go for the dragon dance. Okay, they stay in. They do have the whirlwind. Oh wow. Okay. They could have just whirlwinded on my clang. So they were really prepared, actually. They had whirlwind on Drapion and the Choice Scarf Rapidash. So that was pretty good. Um That's kind of annoying, actually. But we get Rotom in here now. Um, I'm gonna... It's okay, so basically, like... I could just click Volt Switch here, but they could go Zero Aura, with which has Volt Absorb. Um, alternatively, they could just stay in and click like Poison Jab and try to hit me for super effective damage. Not sure what they're going to want to do, but I think their most logical switch is probably Zero Aura. Uh, unless they're expecting the Will-O-Wisp, then they might go Porygon. I'm not sure. I think my best play, though, to for the middle ground is to just go Crocodile. Double into Crocodile. Okay, we see Toxic. That's fine. Yeah, this is definitely more of like a defensive Drapion. And like right here, um, clicking Earthquake is fine. Like I said, we have to start dishing out damage. So we just take out Drapion, get a Moxie boost. The thing is, is though, is Rapidash can come in and outspeed me, which is pretty annoying. So, playing around this Galarian Rapidash is actually really tricky. Luckily, we have a Jirachi. Um, and this Toxic isn't a big deal, but we can heal and wish um, it back up. But yeah, right here, I can't set Crocodile just yet, because Crocodile is looking like a win condition. It's faster than Zero Aura, and it t can take it out. Um, it takes out Charizard after the Mega Evolution with Earthquake. Um, it does. I don't know if it takes out Porygon Z, but it definitely does a lot. It's definitely two KO, and it's definitely two KO on Keldeo. I don't know what Keldeo set they are though. But yeah, right here we're just gonna go into Jirachi to take this play rough comfortably. That did nothing. 
What do we go for here? Uh, I think Psychic is fine. Like, they're not staying in, because they're they're locked into play rough. We know that they're locked into play rough because they were faster than my Como. So... They're not staying in, and so I think getting going for Psychic is fine. I'm just getting um, some chip damage off on something. Let's just do that. We could see Porygon here, we could see Zero Aura. Charizard is going to come in at 50% HP, which is huge because of Stealth Rock. It's fantastic. We do see the Porygon, so this chip damage right here is going to put it in range of Earthquake, which is exactly what we needed. Um, what do I do here? Like, I'm specially defensive. I can live a hit from this thing. Specs Dark Pulse? I don't know. But I think I can live. And because I got that special defense drop, we can take it out with the next Psychic. So that's great. Um, do I want to stay in? I mean, I also have Aura Spear. I take it out with Aura Spear, but Psychic is safer because it hits everything in case they switch. Do I want to stay in, though, and take this damage on Jirachi? I really want to preserve the Healing Wish on Jirachi because I can Healing Wish into Crocodile. The thing is, though, I don't really have another good switch in to this. Like, I want to preserve HP on Rotom, because the Rotom deals with Zero Aura and Keldeo pretty well. Both of them. So I don't want to take, like, half damage on Rotom here. It's not worth it. Uh, I think I'm just going to stay in and click Psychic. I think that's my best play. Like, I'm expecting to see a Dark Pulse here. A Shadow Ball, same thing. So we live that. That's good. Citrus Berry, nice. It's Life Orb. So we take out the Porygon Z. That's good. And Jirachi's still at half HP. So this thing comes back out. What, are, what is this going to go for now? I don't know um, what exactly this is going to click. I really don't. Because we live play rough. Play rough did like 18%. Um, if it has like Zen Headbutt, we live that. Wild Charge, we definitely live that. It probably has high horsepower to hit Jirachi super effectively, but I want to say we live it, but we probably don't. Um, I'm going to make the assumption that we don't live it. I think my play here is to just go into Gyarados. Gyarados is looking like the most expendable Pokemon, um, because it, it just dies to zero aura, even after a Dragon Dance. Um, mm, or do I go Rotom? Because, I mean, Gyarados is good for Kelpio, and Charizard for that matter. I can't write off Charizard just because it's going to be at half HP. It's still a problem. Like, I think he's just going to go for high horsepower. I'm going to go Rotom. Let's see. Ooh. Mega Horn. That was good. So the Mega Horn actually hit Rotom super effectively. I want to say we lived that. I'm going to make the Gyarados play now. So that's kind of annoying that we took that damage on Rotom, but we can still deal with Zero Aura even at half HP. That Mega Horn was a good read. I don't know I don't know if that killed Jirachi. It might have, but it definitely got the Rotom on the Switch. I mean, here we could see Charizard, but... If we see Charizard here, then Gyarados is still a good play. No, it stays in. Cool. That does nothing. After the Intimidate. This thing's locked into Megahorn, so... It can't, um, switch. So I'm just gonna click Waterfall. It's my best play. 
It'll take out Charizard. It'll do good damage to Zero Aura. Um, if Keldeo comes in, then I can just bounce. Keldeo can't do anything to Gyarados, like I said. So I'm expecting to see um, like Charizard or Zero Aura here. I can't Earthquake because Charizard hasn't Mega Evolved yet. It'll be immune. So let's just go for the Waterfall. It is Zero Aura. Kind of wish I Earthquaked, honestly, but that's fine because that's a 2 KO. The only thing is, is that it, they're going to take me out with a Plasma Fist. So we don't see leftovers. I don't know what item this thing has either. Hmm. I think Rotom is the play here. I'm just trying to think. Basically, I'm trying to think how do we play this out in the end so that we don't lose to Rapidash. Because that is what I'm most concerned about right now. Um, Crocodile is looking good, except Rapidash is faster than it. And can take it out. I want to keep Gyarados um, for Keldeo and Charizard. Like, the Intimidate on Charizard might be crucial. Um, I think Jirachi wants to Healing Wish into Crookedile, just to get rid of that Toxic and bring it back to full HP. I want to say at full HP we can play rough for Rapid Dash, but I don't know. Um, Rotom is looking like the most expendable, though. Um, at half HP, I think Keldeo might be able to take it out. So, And as we've seen... Rapidash could probably take it out. So let's just let's just go for Rotom here. I think that's fine. Yep, Plasma Fist. See that doesn't do anything. It's Life Orb. Okay. That's cool. Fortunately I can't click Thunder Wave because this thing has a bolt absorb. Um Do I leave Storm? I guess I just leave Storm. We might see Charizard here, though, is the only thing. If they go Charizard on my Leaf Storm, I'll just Thunder Wave it, I think. Uh, probably. I think Leaf Storm is fine here. Yeah, because let's just take out Zero Aura. Cool. And we're probably going to see the Charizard come out here, finally. This would be the time to bring out Charizard. Oh no, we see Rapidash. Oh, I wonder what that Charizard is. So, this is totally fine, because this has to lock itself into a move. And then I'll know what move it's locked into, so we can just sacrifice Rotom here. Clicking Pain Split is um, totally reasonable. Although Thunder Wave might be better. Actually, Thunder Wave is better. If they miss, Thunder Waving this can win me the game. So... Play rough. Yep. So we lock it locks itself into play rough. Um, that gives us the Jirachi. That gives us the Jirachi. <clears throat> Man, this is this is gonna be close. I don't know if Keldeo probably lives in Earthquake at full HP from Crocodile. So we're gonna have to find a way to weaken that Keldeo. That's why we need to keep Gyarados healthy. Um like I can go Jirachi here, but they'll probably switch into Charizard. So I don't know if Psychic like I'm just trying to decide. I go Jirachi here, I could click Psychic, or Healing Wish. I think either way I'm definitely going Jirachi here. Like Gyarados is not the play, because I need to save the Gyarados for these two. Mm. 
Like, right now they're locked into play rough. So, that's not going to do anything to me. They have to switch. Um, I could easily be carrying Flash Cannon right now, which would take out Rapidash. I'm not. kind of wish I was. Uh, but they, they must be fearing Flash Cannon, so there's no way they're staying in here. But they literally just asked in the chat, do you have a steel move, lol. I'm not responding. Um... Yeah, I think Healing Wish might be the play here, because oh, the only problem is, though, I don't know, part of me, it's either Psychic or Healing Wish. Man. I might also just healing wish the Gyarados, to be honest. No, that's not the play. That's not the play. I can't lose to this Rapidash. I know it has Wild Charge. And Wild Charge takes out Gyarados. I want to just click Psychic, man. But Charizard will come in and then take me out. It'll be faster than me. And then I won't get my Healing Wish off. Do I need to get my Healing Wish off, though? I don't know. Because, I mean, at that point, I can still go Crocodile. I think I click Psychic here. No. Like, there's no way they stay in. This is a really important turn. I'm gonna click Psychic. No. Man, I'm so indecisive. Just worried about losing to the stinking Rapidash. But do I even need the Healing Wish at that point? I'm gonna click Psychic. But I wanna use Healing Wish. The thing is, like, I can Healing Wish Crocodile, but, like, I still don't know if I can live a play rough from Rapidash. Like, if I knew for certain I did, then I would 100% click Healing Wish here, but, like, it's close. Like, I might just get taken out to play rough. It's, it's tough, man. And like, if that's the case, if I do die to the play rough, then we need to make some double switches with Intimidate Gyarados. That's why Gyarados is so important here, is because it has Intimidate. Let's just click Psychic. No. Man, this is my only- this is gonna be my only opportunity to Healing Wish. I know it is. Like, if I don't Healing Wish here, I'm not gonna get another opportunity to Healing Wish. 
And I don't want to lose to Rapidash because I don't Healing Wish here. So I think Healing Wishing here like is the play. Healing Wish into Crocodile into Earthquake. Because then I can still have the Intimidate. I'll have a full health Crocodile. I can switch in with Intimidate. I'm going to do it. I'm going to Healing Wish. We see Keldeo. Oh man, if I psychic I did healing wish. Dude, if I if I actually psychic there, then the Keldeo would have taken huge damage. They must have been expecting the flash cannon though. This is like fine though, cause um Here's what I'm thinking. I heal the crocodile, but then I switch back into Gyarados. Or do I or do I go straight Gyarados? I can't Dragon Dance because Rapidash will still outspeed me and take me out. But if I heal up the Gyarados here, I can at least I mean I could go for a bounce, I suppose. And that would take out Keldeo and probably Charizard. I mean, it would probably take out something. Do I need the health on Crocodile, though? I'm, right now, I'm leaning towards a no, because now, now I'm on the back foot. I was hoping to see Charizard there, because if I saw Charizard there, that's an easy Crocodile heal. But now that we see Keldeo, it kind of forces me to heal the Gyarados, which isn't bad for me, but... Man, I just I just can't lose to this Rapidash. That's the thing. I know it's gonna be last mon Rapidash. Alright, I think I think I have to go Gyarados. Yeah, see we heal Gyarados now. And I'm not going for Dragon Dance because that's use that does not gonna do anything for me. Unless I can get two Dragon Dances. Wait, is that feasible? Let me think about this. Because they, like, Keldeo can't do anything to Gyarados, we know this, especially because I'm at full HP. They have to switch. Alright, if they go hard into Rapidash, um, we can take them out, potentially, with like a Waterfall. Alternatively, we could Dragon Dance if they go Charizard, but we need to Dragon Dance twice. If we Dragon Dance twice, we win. But they might go hard Rapidash here. And if they go switch into Rapidash and I click Dragon Dance, then we just lose. Hmm. But if they go into Charizard and I Dragon Dance here, I would Dragon Dance again. And then I think I would just win after that. But it's tough. I don't think they would risk throwing away the Rapidash. Because they know that Rapidash beats Crocodile. Unless this Keldeo is also Choice Scarf, which, like, maybe it is. I don't know. So, like, part of me really wants to go for Waterfall and, like, try to catch the Rapidash on the Switch. But another part of me is, like, they're not going to be dumb enough to throw away Rapidash. Because Rapidash beats Crocodile every time. Mm. Oh man. I mean, if Charizard comes in, we take it out with Waterfall. If Rapidash comes in, we take it out with Waterfall. Like, Keldeo can't stay in here. Because I could just Dragon Dance. Like, what does Keldeo go for here? I don't know. I don't think it can really go for anything. I think... Man. 
But here's the thing, though. If if they switch into Charizard, and then I take out Charizard with Waterfall, and then they're just going to go into Rapidash, and I'm probably going to lose, because they're just going to click Wild Charge, and then, like, they can just switch around, Wild Charge, play rough, and just take out my last two Pokemon with Rapidash. Because they have killed you. So, like, if they go into Charizard, Dragon Dance is my play. But if they go into Rapidash, Waterfall is my play. If Alternatively, if they stay in with Keldeo, Dragon Dance is still my play. So I'm leaning towards Dragon Dance. I'm gonna Dragon Dance. They Secret Sword. Okay, cool. That's cool. Perfect. So Secret Sword actually did 38. I don't know if that's choice specs. Um, critical hit might take us out, but like, we can pray. I have to click Dragon Dance a second time, though. Yeah. They stay in. Alright. Now, granted we don't miss bounce, I think we can pull this off. Dead. I think that's GG. I think Gyarados just pulled through. Mm. We, we're still faster than this. Yep, goodbye. That's GG, ladies and gentlemen. Gyarados comes through in the late game. See, Healing Wish in Gyarados was the play. Because that Healing Wish on Gyarados meant that we could live two hits from Keldeo. Mm. And we needed to get off two Dragon Dances, because otherwise we would not have outsped Rapidash that turn. That second Dragon Dance ensured that we were faster than the Rapidash that turn. And takes it out. And Charizard just dies here. Critical hit did not matter. GG. GG, everyone. That was a good game right there. And we pull through. Young Magikarp gives the Connecticut Corviknights their first win of the season. Hopefully more to come. Thank you all for watching. And I will see you all next time.